Hi, where are you from? In suburban Chicago. What's your name? The ever impressive. But never duplicate. How to achieve the wet look. Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric C. here. You're watching The Art of Noise. Thanks for watching. Thanks for coming back if you are a recurring subscriber. And to the new subscribers, welcome. So, right here is the Kramer 1980s, somewhere around there. Kramer Focus 6000. And what I'm doing again on this thing is I'm going over it with 2000 grit sandpaper. Then I'll hit it with the 2500 grit sandpaper and then the 3000 grit sandpaper. And the reason why from the last video to this video, the reason why I am going over it with the sandpaper again is because I did find some micro scratches inside of the finish. Stuff that the 2500 grit sandpaper did not take out. So I didn't want to go with a 1500 or a 1000 grit sandpaper because it might be just a little bit too aggressive on this clear coat since I've already sanded the clear a couple of times. I don't want to go through it and then start getting color and then I got a problem where I got to have to re clear coat this whole guitar. So right around over here there was some scratching going on. Uh, it wasn't like camera noticeable but I could see it and I didn't like it. So I went over it again and this time I'm going to go over it with the 2500 grit sandpaper and then the 3000. So hopefully that doesn't go through this because I don't know how much clear it is on here. I don't know if back in the 80s they didn't spray guitars as heavy as they spray them now compared to what I've noticed that are current as far as a finish on a guitar. but. I don't want to take any chances. So right now I'm going to go ahead and hit this with the 2500 grit. And I'm block sanding it of course. And the reason why I'm block sanding it is because I don't want any waviness. I don't want to see finger uh, lines in the finish. And that will cause wavy when you hit it up against the light. So and fluorescent lights are not forgiving when it comes to uh, any type of a paint or finish on anything basically and vehicles uh, you know anything that's got a gloss finish on it man you'll see any type of problem that is in that finish under fluorescence that's why I like fluorescence to where you know in this, especially in the shop where I'm working I could see anything that's going on in the finish and then you know if I sell the guitar or even if I keep the guitar uh, I could end up, you know, knowing that whoever's going to see it, whoever's going to get it, buy it, whatever, it's not going to become a problem as far as, uh, you know, scratches, shitty job, whatever you want to call it. So right now it's the 2500 grit. I've already sanded it with the 2000, and you can really feel the difference between the 2000 and the 2500 grit sandpaper. This 2500 grit sandpaper really doesn't have a bite to it and it kind of like it's pretty smooth going over the finish compared to what the 3000 was. You feel the scratching of it, you feel it's cutting, you can see it's cutting by the amount of milkiness that you're going to see on the body but it's not cutting it to the point where um, you know it's going to cut through this clear super fast and cause a problem or any type of an issue so i'm going to go over this a couple times you know it seems like rinse and repeat but it's you want a nice finish that's what you gotta do knowing how much clear is on here and how much paint is on here would help 
to determine on how much sanding you need to do. But when you didn't do it, you gotta be real careful. So far it's pretty good. And one thing I like with other guitars, newer guitars and stuff, you can kind of judge by like the edges of how much finish is on that guitar by how the edges look. And this one here, I mean, you did a nice job with it at the factory when they first built this thing that you can't really tell on the edges is at how much finish is on here. And this being a candy apple red, I don't want to have to refinish it. Candy apple red is a tricky, it's a tricky process to, to spray. Um, some you could spray it out of the can and you know you instantly have a candy apple red but true candy apple red has got a silver uh, base coat not necessarily a primer silver it's a paint silver and it's got a little bit of a um i would say like a metal flake to it and then you have your candy apple red that goes over that which is somewhat transparent to bring that silver out between the very, very micro metal flake that's in the silver and then the candy going on top of that, it kind of reflects the light. One hard thing about doing a candy apple silver or a candy apple red is that a lot of times it looks blotchy. You know, it looks like you have blotchiness, it just doesn't look completely con consistent all the way through. You have some dark spots, light spots, dark spots. So trying to accomplish a nice finish with a candy apple red. It's a little bit of a pain in the ass. Now on my PT Cruiser, uh, when I had the custom PT Cruiser, me and my brother did a candy orange uh, pinstriping on it. And that was sprayed on, it wasn't a uh, pinstriping or anything else. So when it was clear coated, you didn't feel nothing. It was all flat, the surface. and that also had a silver base to it before applying the candy color over it and I, I love the way that candy uh, orange came out it looked beautiful on that thing for a stripe so this is like no different if I would have to refinish this yeah, it would be a pain in the ass but candy apple red is a beautiful color and it used to be a really sought after color with the custom paint jobs as far as motorcycles and vehicles go. And I would love to have a bike done in a candy apple red. My father, years ago, we did a Harley Davidson motorcycle and, well, I didn't do it, my father did it. And more at that time it was more of my father and my brother than it was me and my father, because I was younger then. But back then, uh, we had a crowd that would you know come over and stuff like that they were all you know motorcycle enthusiasts bikers biker groups whatever you want to call them <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> and my father would work on their bikes and stuff and that's how i learned a lot of what i'm doing with the guitars with the finishes is because of what i grew up with in the past but my father did a candy apple red paint job on a bike which wasn't something that you seen back then. Um, I'm talking when I was, I mean, I'm 51 now. I'm talking probably when I was like, like, I don't know, eight, 10 years old. All right, so we're going back quite a ways. Now, the fenders, the tank got sprayed black. Okay, nothing custom about that. At that time, the hot rod flames was kind of the, the thing to go with. And then you would see, uh, sometimes you would see multicolored flames. It would go from um, yellow to orange to red, or red, orange to yellow, depending on what that person wanted as far as the colors go. My father did a candy apple red flame. And it wasn't a ghost flame at the time. Um, what he ended up doing was he, he took and sprayed the tanks and the fenders black throughout the whole thing. Masked off the flamed area, the fire, you know, it was they, not true flame, it's kind of, or a tribal flame, it's more like the hot rod flame, okay? Now, 
what he ended up doing is masking off the shape of the flame, uh, masking off the remainder black part of the gas tank that he didn't want to paint, sanded down the area that uh, was going to get painted. And what he did was is he took a silver and he kind of went, say, like, this is the flame, okay? So the flame, the silver was darker here, and then it lightened up as it got to the tips of the flame. When he did his candy apple red to it, it was darker here, and then as it got up, it kind of just, like, faded out. But you could still see the candy red on top of the black, just without having a lot of so it looked fucking awesome the guy who was really happy with the outcome and how that turned how the, his bike turned out and uh, we started doing shit like that and uh, then we got into uh, my father was into like uh, uh, he had a, a triumph and it was all customized and everything else and he started going into the bike shows and stuff with it and now his triumph was a chopper and I don't mean where the uh, the neck where the front forks met up was cut and then extended this was the kind of the old-school chopper where the front end of the bike was up high off the from where the ground was and then you put longer forks on them and uh, that was kind of like the way the chopper was back then uh, he was using like um, lace lace curtains uh, using it as kind of like just putting it over the top of whatever he was painting spray his color take it off and now you have a pattern the lace pattern in there he was using templates uh, the biggest thing back then like the 70s was like flowers okay you had different types of templates that were and he used to get the, these the, those envelopes those cardboard uh, folding envelopes that they use for filing cabinets and stuff and that's what he'd make his templates out of and uh, he would make like a petal design like a flower petal and kind of like just you know move it around and stuff until he got the design that he was looking for uh, it, and it was unbelievable the way that uh, he used to do his painting and stuff the one thing I never learned how to do was spray with a gun but when it came to polishing and finishing and stuff um, that I learned quite a bit of and it, it became a thing with me where even when I had my own vehicles I've always had some type of a custom car my first vehicle was a black s10 pickup uh, s10 pickup uh, I believe it was an 89 s10 with the 4.3 liter engine inside of it uh, fuel injected and that I did a lot of work on the motor um, dressing it up and, and souping it up a little bit but the body was already taken care of by whoever owned the vehicle before me and I ended up doing a lot of polishing on that thing and my father used to sit there say, and say that you know you're gonna you know you're gonna polish off the paint off that thing the way I used to keep it and it was garage kept you know it wasn't something that was out in the street all the time or the driveway all the time and that was my pride and joy at the but I learned a lot as far as, you know, on my own vehicles, if I made a mistake or something that uh, uh, I'm going to pay for later, you know, because of what I did as far as polishing goes or something, well, I learned how to take care of it myself. And with my father's help, uh, you know, I ended up working out pretty good. I never went through the paint, though. Never buffed through the paint, never polished through the paint or anything. So that was one thing that I'm proud of because I haven't done it with these things yet either. So right now I've got a 3,000 grit sandpaper, it's a pad, on my drill. And what I want to do is just go over this thing and polish out whatever scratches. And this thing's going to have a sheen to it like, um, uh, like it's already been buffed kind of. Not that it doesn't have one now. All right, so now that that is done, I'll wipe off the excess. Now this should give me a little bit of a sheen to it, kind of like a, a semi-gloss. Not so much flat, flat, but a semi-gloss flat. Kind of like what it's doing now. So 
So you can kind of see the areas where I stayed away from, like right here, right here, because this swelled up a little bit even after putting the uh, clear coat inside there. So I didn't put enough clear coat inside the hole over here, so it swelled up just a little bit. So I'm trying to avoid more swelling. So I'm trying to stay away from some of the holes a little bit. So now I can kind of see if there's any deep scratching still going on. And I got one deep scratch right there, but I'm not going to really mess with it too much. And I can kind of see in the finish. I need to go over this with the 2000 grit or 2500 grit, a little bit more before starting the buffing process. Because I can kind of see some of the directions of the way I was doing the sanding. Now you can kind of see this kind of looks like it has somewhat of a gloss to it, right? Well, it doesn't. It's still got a it's got a sheen to it. So I'm gonna go over it again with the 2500 grit. Because I think I'm looking at the 2000 grit sandpaper scratches, and I don't want that. I want to get rid of that because when I do the polishing, it's going to show up. It's going to see it. Now, some of you guys might sit there and say, why are you wasting your time with something this old? All right, well, the condition of the paint's good. The condition of the body's good. I've got a new neck for it, which almost leads me to believe, because I got the neck from the same seller, that this is the neck that went with this body. Uh, the value of this guitar is still up there as far as resale value goes and i'm not one who likes to relic things okay i'm not someone who, who you know and unless it's been patinaed uh naturally uh relic as far as just wearing itself out then i would say hey yeah you know that has character to it keep that character and see what we can do as far as like preserving it but everything that i've been getting so far has been uh, pretty much like this, you know, it's, it's been in good shape, uh, almost excellent shape, and I kind of want to keep it that way. And like I said, with this Kramer here, the resale value of it is still good. I mean, it's not bad. Now, with the amount of money that I put into this as far as a new net goes, uh, some of the hardware, and then next will be the electronics for this. Um, I'm not probably going to see all of that back in return, but I know at least I'll get my money back as far as trying to resell this. And the nicer it looks, especially for its age, um, you know, it's like, wow, you know, someone took care of this guitar. Someone, you know, it's like a an old vehicle that, that still looks like it, it came from the factory. You know, it's like, wow, you know, something this old has been well taken care of, um, played, used, but taken care of at the same time and for the new person that may own this guitar um you know i want them to look at it and be like you know wow you know this thing looks like it came back from the factory still uh, although this does still have you know wherever there is some touch of paint it's not quite matched with the candy because i didn't don't know what color candy apple red this is and what I used, I'm not going to sit there and, and try to fool around with uh, trying to find the right color with this because I don't have the equipment here uh, to actually break this paint down to find out exactly what is in it, how much of what color is which, and to have it custom made or custom mixed for me. So as long as those chips are filled, chips are sealed, and they're not going to end up, you know, you know chipping later on and stuff that's fine color is just a tad bit darker well it's an old guitar what can i say it beats relicking it right Now that's what I'm talking about. 
and I'll bring you in a lot closer so you can see what I'm talking about as far as the scratches. Check that out. All gone. All that's left is a wet look. You shut this light off so it can focus. So it's focusing focusing on the light. There you go. All right, so I'm gonna take a little bit of a break to do an unboxing. So this one I already opened up and this is the one I was waiting for. This is the determine of basically uh, what this Kramer is as far as year roundabout and where it was made. So going back and forth with the seller of this body and he found it, he found the back plate for this guitar and sent it to me. I had to open it up and check it out. Now this is the Neptune, New Jersey, USA. So this is a Japanese made, but assembled in the US. Okay, if you guys get that. This is the neck plate for this guitar, finally. And then he gave me the screws to go along with it. It fits the body, the holes line up, and it's what it's supposed to be. Now here are the tuners that I picked up for this thing. Nothing too fancy. Don't need any locking tuners for this because it's not going to be uh, got locking nut. Why would I need locking tuners on it? So what did I pick up? Come on you. Really pack this in good. All right, so I got some Goto machine heads. These are six and six. Hopefully, these are not small because they look kind of small for this headstock. So let's take a look when these out of the package. Take a look at this. So grab one. Nice little Godos. And let's see how well. Oh no, these line up perfect. These are great. All right, the holes line up and everything. So that's what I picked up for the headstock. I'm still waiting for the Kramer logo for the headstock so I can finish the headstock and finish the neck. So that's that. All right. Now all I have to do is start figuring out what I want to do as far as electronics go. I got this. This is the main thing that I've been waiting for. It cost me 45 bucks for this plate, but to be honest with you, um, yeah, I needed it. All right, get back to business over here. 